Okay. So welcome. Uh, let's go here. That's all right. My name is Brian Knight and I live near Melbourne in Australia and it's just turned 5.30 in the morning on a Thursday. Yes, I'm not confused today. I do know what day it is. Yeah, it's Thursday for me anyway, wherever else it is in the world. I'm not sure what time. So um, uh, Tom's already on it. That's good. Right now, let's just share this screen to start out with. And Rick's there too. Ooh, wow, privileged. So welcome to this live Forex analysis session. Please note any trades discussed here are to be classed purely as educational only. That's because we're a group of people helping each other and we are not financial advisors. So please only take trades you're happy to take based on your own analysis. As I always suggest, you need to do, use the demo account until you can prove to yourself that you are profitable until you and then then you can trade live money if you want to always follow proper risk management to protect your account as taught nine academy and the ninja group as each trade carries risk as well as potential profit uh it's good to see that other parts of this ninja group are also trading uh with one percent on any particular pair so that's all that this strategy requires so if the recording of this session goes anywhere and you're not already an exclusive ninja member then please get back to the person who referred you uh, as an exclusive ninja member i have access to go live uh, where there are professional traders that trade this strategy and other profitable strategies as well there is also a full risk disclosure here and a little bit about us as live session traders okay so there we go that's the uh that's the bit we need to get done let's go and have a look and see what's happening on the charts so who who's got any questions or feedback or things we should look at or stuff to notice Hi, Brian. no Hi, Tom, what are you following at the moment? Can you not hear me? Ah, I can now. Oh, there you are. I'm saying hello. That's okay. <laughs> what is there that you might, that we're... Uh, that you want to... we're looking at? Yeah, that you're looking at, yeah. I noticed uh, I that... Yeah. Go, go ahead. No, I just noticed Alistair in, the group, in our chat group. He was looking at... What is it, CHF, JPY, or <laughs> some other weird currencies? Yeah, he had a few in there. Um, yeah. I can look if you want. No, that's okay. Oh, okay. Uh, I've got it here anyway. He was Euro JPY, four hour yeah. bounce or break. JPY. And see it, yeah. So that's if JPY. I don't know what he's doing trading that, but anyway, he's tracking what? CHF JPY. He was. Oh uh, yeah. Me too. Like that's way up there and keeps going. Like it's not a lot different to Ked JPY. Um, like it's just crazy over. Like on the one minute chart, look at look at the last twenty four hours push up. Pull back down if we look at where the session uh, sessions. It's like at the start of London, it just did a little push down and then up it went. And then from basically from when New York opened, it's just sort of been trailing its way down and just flattening out. I don't. I guess I don't understand how those boxes help you. I I I just don't get it. I guess. Okay. What, what Let, is what is the point of the box? I mean, I know it's the time frame. Okay, let's the look. sessions within that time frame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll just show you what I what I see. If you look at the Sydney Tokyo session time, just in that one box, it gives me what the low is, and it gives me where the high is pushing to, or low. That it, it, the high and low within that within that range. It's just a visual thing. Okay. 
So as it goes along, okay. if it so th this box would have been down here and there at this point, and then the box doesn't uh, keep going until it goes past this point. Then it starts going. It follows it back up to that. Then it comes down to there. Right. So inside this box of Sydney Tokyo, if I look that there, right there is when Tokyo opened. That's Sydney. It spiked. Tokyo opened and it came back down. I'm looking at swing highs and swing lows. Okay. So for me, uh, where am I? There. That becomes a high. That then becomes a low after the market opens. And that there is exactly when it's changed. So as this is pushing up, you could quite easily say, oh, this, if you're in the, if you're going to consider getting in the trade and you think, oh, this is going in the buy direction, I'll get in on a buy. This is a little bit like an EMA, right? Or, a, you know, like a, a trend. A lot of the time when a market opens, the trend goes in the opposite direction. Right? So that's okay. That's that one there, right? Now, if we go, oh, how can I pull that across the cart? Okay, so then it comes down to this point. This is like um, a swing low, but the point is that's not when a market opens or closes necessarily, okay? So then it changes direction. So when it pulls back up again and does that, so this is like around my lunchtime which I've noticed things can change or keep pushing in the same direction. This is, so I, at this point you could go, okay, look at that. It's broken structure. Come back down. I'll just get rid of that. And you could go, right. I will, uh, I will at this point here, get into a trade. So push down and pull back up. You could say, okay, at some point here, could be there or there or wherever, you can get in a trade for a sell. Now, this is if you're watching it, if you're not, like what time is that? That's like 9.30. So you can see it changed direction within half an hour. I could spend 15, 30 minutes at this and, and see that there's a potential trade in that. Right? Okay. So I could put my 1% on and I could put a target back down at entry which it, it went back down at changeover, right, from New York into Sydney. So this is just one bit. Then once I see this, you get out of the trade, you're waiting for it to either create a new low or create a higher low. When it creates a higher low, get in for the buy, right? So here's another opportunity somewhere here, for example, or a buy and just sit in it. Oops. Yeah. Okay. And so then it comes to a high, it, it breaks that high there and creates a new high. Checking the market. It comes back down here. I could get in for a sell. Now you would probably potentially lose out of this trade right I, I, I'll, to be honest if you if you keep following this right um let's uh so if i now say okay it pulled back down broke structure pull back up i could get into a trade for a sell there but what it may do is it'll just pop back up and you lose one percent so what have we got here? Let's, and this is just me tracking it. So if I put a, a trade there, we put, a, say, a five pip on it. I'm just being conservative there. Uh, it comes down, and as it comes back up again, you might have 3 or 4%. If you do get out here when you can see it, you know, you've got six. If it comes back up and pulls back down there a bit, which it'll do, there's still 5% on that trade, okay? I'll just move that across a little bit. 
Then we can get into another trade for a long position if you want. Here, again, let's go up. Another five pips. You could track that up to at least the high here, which is a good 8%. It goes back up further, and as it comes back, just imagine conservative, you don't, and, and you have a, how do I put it? Uh, we'll talk about this. I mean, Paul's talking about creating or having some sort of exit with this new, um, with the indicator, the pro trend, which will be called something else. But anyway, so there's a good 10%. So it's five there, 10 there. Then if you get into this trade for a sell, I'm not going to say you will, but I'm just getting to that. you got five pips on that one. Same sort of thing. Ooh, 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 ooh. Um, it'll come down here, that's 3% or whatever, but then it pops back up and it'll take you out, right? So right. either you're monitoring... Would, you really, or, would yeah. you really get into that because it's on an upturn? Uh, I'm just taking... Uh, let, let me... Well, an experienced trader, probably not, Tom, right? Probably not. Okay. But the, all, the point I'm making is if you take a trade at every opportunity, you're going to see that you're not going to be, well, not every, every waking, every opportunity that you are awake, right? This is me in awake in that session. So people in the UK, um, like Peter or Helen, uh, that uh, probably or whoever else might be from UK here, that's probably not your good time to trade, but it is for me. That's my waking time, awake time. Okay. 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 I understand. So even though I say this might not be a lot of movement, now we're down on the one minute. I have said in the past and that, but there are opportunities for me. So I've got to, I've got to try and take my opportunities in my wake time, and get the best percentage returns. And that's how I'm. Thinking. So here's uh, uh, gain five, gain ten. Uh, lose one. Just keep a tally on that, right? Now, if if I now, and this is just something that I've been doing because of my discussion with um, Jeff, if we find, where is it, just there, I, um, how about this, I tend not to trade in this sort of from 6 a.m. to about 8 a.m. UK time. So whatever that is for you. So in response to you saying, well, what do I do with these boxes? It just gives me a visual of this is now after, uh, after it's made, whatever the high pulls back again. And you're probably right. I probably wouldn't get into that trade. But if you did because you're just taking trades when the opportunities arise. Um, but the reason why I wouldn't is because that's at the 6 a.m. UK time, which is 3 o'clock my afternoon. And it's getting ready pre-London. Yeah? Okay. So what it tends to do pre-London is it tends to play around a bit and then not right at London Open, but after London Open, right, it settles itself and then it takes it in the direction that it wants to. And you can see this is consolidation, correct? I'll just take that off for yeah. the minute. You can see that's consolidating there. Yeah. So it comes back up to that high, doesn't break it, pulls back down again. You'd go like, oh, is it? No. Then it does this, comes back up, it visits, and then drops back down here. So I'd be, this is where I would then at this point put a GAN box on and I'd probably have it from about there down to there and I'd just be looking for it to break out of the box. You could tighten that up a bit because in my opinion, that's more of where it is as it's creating and I'm going to see it break out so as it comes out, I'd probably look at somewhere here because it's come back to there and visit. You get into that trade. But this is 
getting where's that yeah no that's right that's seven o'clock by nine so you get into the trade somewhere there here's another opportunity here somewhere and oh, that's conservative i've waited you could have got in there at any point in time i'll show you something in a minute which i think is going to change the way we do this and what i'm doing is i'm looking for a high i'm looking for a, that that direction to continue in that london session until it comes to new york so see just before new york it makes a high and pulls back down again changes direction they just changed direction. London, so, okay, where do we go? Um, Sydney Asian, pull up, consolidation, then it pull back up. Then as soon as it's about to New York, then it starts coming back down again. And you could observe a lot of the time it'll either continue or it'll just change direction. That's all you need to know. So you could then... At that point, you're out of the trade. When it comes back, you could even pull it back down a bit and say, right, okay, pull up. You could be in the trade. When it pulls back down here, uh, you could be out. So that's another 11. Okay. And then you could say, radio, and we'll add all these up in a minute. Uh, and then you could say, right, it's pulled down. It's created a lower high. And you could get into that trade. What time's that for me? Uh, it's like 11 o'clock at night. I oh, know, 10 o'clock, sorry. 10 o'clock, it's all right. I could get into that trade. You can see it comes back and spikes back there. If I had have got in a little bit further down, because I wasn't quite on top of it, then um, that would probably take you out. But the point is, if it didn't, you could tell me which way you want to do it. <laughs> but if that... Can we put on a five on that? Somewhere there. <clears throat> and if you travel, even if you'd stayed in there, that's still 7%. Now we've got, what is it? Five plus 10, 15, minus one's 14, plus 11 is... Uh, five. Sorry? 25. Good. Plus seven. 32. Yeah. 32. That's my that's my waking and even sleeping hours. Doesn't really matter. I could stay in that trade. If I didn't, and that knocked me out. How many I got? Sorry. What? How much in total, Tom? 32. 32. If I lose one percent there because it lost there, I still got 31%. And that's in my waking hours on one pair. Right. Okay. So what I'm in your question, why do I have these boxes on? I can turn them off. But the point is it's giving me when the when the market um changes over. And what I'm seeing is when it changes over, it can either continue the direction or change the direction. Just okay, as I'm New York did. I'm going to figure out those times that. Uh... Okay, you ready? I'll do this for you, Tom. What are you again? What time zone you're in? New York, Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Okay, are you ready? So your um, the start is fourteen. So it's uh, two o'clock in the afternoon. Correct. Uh, okay. Two o'clock in the afternoon. You either write this down or I'm, I'm terrible with I'm terrible with military time. So it's two o'clock okay. in the. I'm, I'm, I'll have this. I have this recorded. So just go ahead and go through it. Okay. All right. So two o'clock in the afternoon is when it changes from New York to Sydney. That's the start. It, let's make that the start of, start of your trading day, right? So two o'clock in the afternoon. If you. Uh, two hours in so it's 16 that's when Four that's when uh tokyo opens now in this in this indicator i can't i can only have three sessions so i just know that after sydney opens two hours later at the moment 
Tokyo opens. That's all I remember, right? I need to remember. Then you already know London opens at midnight for you, correct? Uh, one, isn't it? 1 a.m.? Uh, no, I think it's midnight. <laughs> I might be wrong, but okay, I've got it. Right. Okay. Oh, well, you have it set on my time, right? Yeah, I've got it set on your time. Yeah, then, you, then you're right. Yeah. What so, time does Paul, when Paul does his sessions, he starts at 8.30 in the morning. Isn't that 30 minutes after after it opens? The market correct. Opens? Correct. So, so if, me, I, if, if, so I, if I change that to London, if I change that to London time, that's 8 o'clock in the morning when London opens. So if I change it back to that, you're right, Rick. If I change it back to Los Angeles, that becomes currently midnight for Tom. For Tom's time zone. Yeah, I'm an I'm an hour difference, but that's me. Like I get alerts from the Paul sessions are at 2 30 in the morning my time. Yeah. So that's and I'm only an hour difference from Tom. Okay. So that's so that's midnight when London opens. So you gotta remember that pre-London when London opens. So this will be in your night time when London's going. And then of course when New York opens is uh uh I've got it is five in the morning for you, Tom. Because you're Los Angeles and New York's on the other side of the dirt, the di you know the the, right. the country, you've got three hours difference. So five, so three hours. Isn't it three hours difference from one side to the other? Yeah. Yeah. So that makes it eight a.m. in the morning. Yeah. So your five a.m. is when when New York opens, and then it goes through again till two o'clock. Okay. Well, no, so uh, yeah, till two o'clock, absolutely. Okay, can you go through your settings? Yeah, so sure. I can see if you've changed anything. Oh, are these ones? Uh, yeah. The well, settings are so right out of the box. Out of the box, all I do is put my time zone in. Okay. I say history. You can say yes or no, which means you'll have the times before. I just do session ones and I type in Sydney, Tokyo, don't, and then I just put my times. Don't look at these times because um, my times are different. Correct, correct. Exactly what I said before. That'll be okay. two to whatever, you know, to midnight. And then, yeah. So then London, you know, you put your times and then New York, put your times. Um, and then I, yeah, just, leave this stuff it doesn't really matter the rest of it and that's just basically out of the box all you gotta do is change this and then the names in each one of those does that make sense yeah is and, and, and your question is important because the, uh, maybe i haven't explained this enough but that's what i that's why i ha have this on or off because i want to know when markets are going to open or close because it's a bit like an EMA. Will it break it, or will it, or will it um, bounce off it? Right, right. Because you can and, see, and it's nice. To, it's nice to see what's done in its time allotment. Correct, correct. And and look, we're in a one minute chat. You've got plenty of time to have a look and see, and you know. Okay, I, it comes to me in the afternoon. I go at three o'clock in the afternoon. I go, ah, oh, it's six a.m. U UK radio. Will I go and look at the charts? Yeah, maybe we'll see. Uh, but probably it'll be after eight, which is five o'clock my afternoon. Paul's on five thirty, or somebody, or or uh, Richard's on, or whatever. It's like okay. I'll take my time, I can come and have a look, and then I can see whether it's continuing. Now, so that's that's just one pair waking hours or non-waking. Just imagine I've lost this that trade there. So I'll just take these off now, all right? I'm just giving you an example of what you could have there, right? And I'll just get rid of these things too. But this is just really easy mapping of one pair, what you want to do in the sessions. If I take this session stuff off now, right, I'll just hide it. I've got without, you know, I've got a swing high, swing low, swing high, a low there, a high there, 
a low there and back. So if you're just looking at the market structure in a 24-hour period, it's there. But the reason why I overlay the markets because it gives me a much better idea of when potentially that, that change of direction from a high to a low or low to high is going to occur. Right. That's the reason why I've got it in there because it's just really that opportunity. That on, right, because you really can't tell that on that blank screen. No, no, no. Not unless you're really good at knowing where the times are and you're looking. And once you, by, by overlaying this on here, over time, you're going to know this anyway. Right. Yeah, because it's just that's just a visual overlay for, to help you. Over time, you'll just know. Like, so for me, it's really simple. That's 7 a.m. for me. I know. That, just after that, is 9 a.m. because that's where it changed to Tokyo, right? And then it does this. Um, this bit of stuff here, somewhere in here, where is it? Oh, no, I've got to change this. I'll, I'll change it to my time. It's just me. Hopefully, it's not too confusing. I go like, okay, that's the 6 a.m. I can pre-put that line in. So that's 6 a.m. UK. I know that somewhere around here will be the start of, of the UK session. I'm looking for a change or a continue. So that pushed up, consolidation, that was a continuation. So it could have broken out the bottom and I could have then gone for a break of structure, pull back, get into the cell. But I didn't. Right. It went up, broke structure, pull back, get into the buy. Okay, then it pushed up, you get out, it comes back, you got you get a break of structure, comes back into um what's that, and then you get into the cell. This is a little stop hunt to take people out, but you know that sometimes can happen in the in the US session. So let's look at the day before. This is uh this is all you want to do. See, this is the day before, the la the 24 hours before the one we're in. If I then put on this market stuff, you can see Sydney Asian. This is where Tokyo came in around about there. See it pull back down and then off it went up. London Open, it pushed up, consolidated, pushed up further. But see this chain when New York Open, whoop, up it went further. It didn't change direction, come back down. Just before London closed, it pulled down, then it went up again. And then it came back down by, by the end of the by the end of the New York. But see this where London finishes and New York started. What did it do? Created swing high and then came back down. All right, I will be installing that ASAP. These are these are just things to notice. It's sort of nice like visual, actually. Yeah. Okay. It really chops up the. It really chops up the screen. Yeah, into the bit, which shows you, like, look at that changeover and, like, woof, went into a buy and then it pulled back down again. Well, that pullback was because I wanted to profit. Then off it went again. Right? It just, that pullback, that's a perfect time to get into the trade. If you don't get that, which you don't, you would wait for that and then get that. You could have got into that one. Or, you know, it's, it just depends. Isn't that around your 6 o'clock? No, that's not. Six o'clock is here for me back over here. No, this was eight o'clock at night. Eight o'clock at night. Yeah. Which, you know, London opens at five o'clock my evening and then three hours later, off it takes. Takes off. Right. That was that day, right? Now, let's go back to here because this is, we'll, take, we'll just then hide that back again. Now, we went through the exercise, waking time. You've got to work out what your waking time is in, is in amongst all of this. Um, I'll just take that GAN box off. We don't need the minute because we're now going to start to get a little bit more uh, like, okay, so if you're not at the charts, how are you going to um, be aware that there's something going on, right? as far as a potential trade one is the times of the day yeah and you hang around about those times or you come to check them the, the market at those times so you can have time away from the charts and if it surges and you're not there well that's just the way it is 
But if we now go, well, because I've got EMAs on, and you can see this is, for me, I see where it's going to, it just pushed down to that 800 and then pulled away. Came back to 800, pulled away, right? So it can break through. So you're going to notice, does it break the 800 or does it actually pull away from it? The 62 for me is important because that also too is another point where the 62, but like that's just me. So you don't have to notice that. <laughs> um, but now if we put on uh, high highs and higher lows, that's just giving you your swing high and swing lows, okay? You can do that. There's another one that the Hoff's playing with. It's called Super Trend. I've used it before as well. And basically, it just gives you what the trend and whether it maybe is continuing or not, right? I'll get rid of that one out there. So, for example, if you got up and when you, and you got into this trade here and you're going like, oh, should I get out or pull back? While the super trend is green, you would stay in that trade. While the super trend is red, you would stay in the trade. Just a thought, right? That's one thing. Super trend. It's called super trend. Yeah, it's a it's a a free. So if you go to indicators and type in S U P E R T R E N D, you'll see it's by Kivak Oslobliki. Whatever. Some Polish guy. Or you can Nailed just do it. this super trend if you want. Oh, this is just in the technicals. Um, All right. So there's right. that one. Now, uh, that's that that thing. The second, the next thing is what you are all going to have access to relatively soon. Uh, we're going to do this in a shorter, much closer look at this, okay? Because it just depends on what this this still still follows the same principles um, as what we're we're doing in bankers. We're just looking for swing highs, swing lows, and movements in the market, okay? It's just in tighter. So now, if I turn on this, we just got we've just got it's the it's just labeled pro trim, but don't don't get too fussed with the name at the moment because it's just a name of something. It'll be, I'd say, when you get access to it, it will be a different name. Okay. Now, don't worry about any other indicators at all. All we're doing is. Um, and if you want to know that what I've got as settings, I can tell you in a moment. But that uh, actually, what I might do, I oh, know we'll just leave it at this, right? This is I've played around with some of the settings in in here in the pro trend. So Sydney opens. It's just before, so it's an hour from now. One hour from now, which should be you should be one o'clock. Uh, Tom, is that correct? About now. Correct. Good. One in your afternoon. Yeah. Good. Oh, did you notice, too, you can now change the time of this? Oh, is it there? Oh, I don't know if it's there. Oh. Uh, I think you can change that to either be AM or PM somewhere. I noticed uh, the Hoff put into the group. Anyway, sorry to, 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 to move. While you're getting this smaller, I'm saying smaller colour, pink, to white, to pink, to white, you would not get in this trade, right? Because it's just, it's it's going sideways, right? So this eight o'clock, yeah, no, wait, wait, yeah, eight o'clock, beautiful, goes, ding. You probably would not get this trade because I'd be looking at, ding, 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 this right there. That's nine o'clock, which is Tokyo Opens. What am I looking for, Tom? When Tokyo opens? Yep. See, it did a push up oh, in the go, Sydney. To go in, an opposite, to go in the opposite direction. Or, or. Or continue up. Th thank you very much. Right. Okay. Now, this is, no good, this is no good for the people in the UK because you're probably asleep, right? 
So either it's going to continue up and those white um, Hikaneshi follow will, 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 it'll go pink or whatever and then it'll go white again or it'll go pink. It went pink and then it did a little pull up. What does that tell you? It didn't break the previous high. Correct. And so that means what? It's going to turn pink again. Correct. It's probably going it's to go in a cell start. direction. So what have we got as an opportunity right here now? Uh, cell. Good. Tom, you're onto it. See that yellow dot? Color yep. change? Went from pink to white, back to pink. Time to get in. So here we go. So those we colored go. dots are indications of color change? Correct. All they do, see, see where it says CCD? Color change direction. Or, right. Sorry, color change down. Color change up. The blue box okay. is a color change up. The yellow dot is a color change down. Right. So I now go at this point, somewhere here, I go, I'm going to get into that trade. I'm going to put as tight a stop loss as I want. Uh, let's, let's say five, because that's been my favorite number. But what I'm finding with this is it can be much tighter. Okay. Can be much tighter. And I'm now going to ride this. Now, there's a couple of things here. I'll, I'll just show you. As I'm watching this, I'm in the trade watching. I'm in the trade for this period of time. Now, what will it be? This will be roughly from there to there. So it's about an hour and a half. I can sit here for an hour and a half if I really need to, or I could go away and make sure I come back, right? No, I don't know it's going to be an hour and a half, right? So when it comes down here and hits the this the, that's the uh the 62 right and that my that color one there that bluey light bluey one is my 62. when it comes down and it it pulls down comes back and revisits the 62 if it doesn't break up past it i'll, I'll try and make it closer for you hang on look, look. all right this is the whole move as in the trade opportunity See that light bluish line? That's a 62, right? So I got in the trade right there. So come up. I had plenty of time. It was like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, nine. It was probably 10 minutes I had there to go, oh, should I get in? Oh, I don't know. Oh. You went to right? coffee. <laughs> yeah. But I got a color change there, and I got in like on the next candle or something like that, somewhere around there, right? And as it comes down, it breaks the 62. I'm going, yee-haw, down, comes down nearly to the 200, pulls back to the 62, doesn't break it, drops back off. I have no colour change there. It doesn't go white and it's going down. So I'm at this point, I'm sitting here going, oh, it's a good entry. Yay, love it, right? It goes back down again, pulls back up to the 62, breaks through. <gasps> I'm nervous. There's white. There's white here, right? See the white bits, the white bits there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I get a blue box and it pulls up and it goes past the 62 and it's up there and then it pulls down past the 62. Okay. Whew. Now, I could have jumped out at that point, which means at this, if it for the 62, I could have. I only have 1.35%, but at least it's 1.35. If it had a pullback up here, what could I have done, Tom? Cancelled the trade. Correct. And would I have lost without. anything? No, probably not. There you go. Job done. Or I could have moved my stop loss to break even, uh, and I'll, I'll show you something in a minute. So now it comes back down. Right, and it comes back down here and it pulls back down to the bottom here, then pulls back up again. Still hasn't broken, it just comes up, touches 62, pulls back down again, right? So, oh, I'm still in the trade. It's still purple, I'm still in it. No, actually, I should do this, shouldn't I? If I put the super trend on, you'll see that that's still red the whole time. Yeah? It turned uh -huh. green. It turned green just there. So it could be like, oh, maybe it could have got me jittery. But 
the point is you're still in profit. So you have time here to move your stop loss and to be break even plus one or whatever it is. Who cares, right? But the super trend may get you in or you may get nervous at that point, right? Next thing, it goes back, it's still purple. Well, I mean, I'm, this is great. Fantastic, right? Then at some point, it's going to change, right? So it pulls all the way down to the 800. You could have the 800 as a profit or just above it if you want. Somewhere there, maybe. So you got the 800 and you say it's going to come down close to the 800, then it's going to pull away. Because what's it going to do? Either one or two things at the 800? Push through or bounce. It's either going to bounce off it, which it did, or it's going to, or it's going to break through it, and it didn't do that. So there's a 5 or 6% in that before, and you could set that TP back up here. So it comes down. It would have got you out there, pull back, go back, and you go like, oh, I should have stayed in. No, right? So there's a, there's a 5 or 6%. You can walk away for the week if you wanted to out of that one trade that just took you how long? That just you were in that trade for an hour and 14 minutes, or if you imagine over there, an hour and 30. That's it. Job done, finished. Hi, Brian. Go and have a pina colada. You know, whatever you like to do. Yes, Alistair, you're going to ask a question. Sorry, I'm late. So I'm late on. Had a, no, that's had a okay. Water leak, but we're talking about a water leak. Um, based on what Paul has been trialling, and he enters on the two minute. I know he does. We just change yeah, I, I know, know he does, Alistair. <laughs> I, 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 so know uh, no, I know. I, that's what I'm not going to say. That's not what I'm going to mention. Yeah. Um, could, you change, could you change the chart to five minutes? Yeah, sure. Yeah, can. We'll see how it looks. Well, Paul was saying that it's meant to smooth it out and it keeps you in and the purple stays purple. It will, but you're going to be in a lot later. So you're going to be in down here you know, somewhere. He He's going well. He's going on the two. You're going on the one. So that's you get early entry and five. Change it once you're in. That's what he was suggesting. Yeah, but I think for me, I we've been playing on the one minute, so it's pretty easy. Mm -hmm. uh, that's you know you go on the one minute, but then look at maybe what Paul's and I don't know. You, you're trialing it. I haven't done it. Um, yeah, changing the time frame as you, as the trade's progressing to see. If yeah, I well you can do that. Um, uh, Elsa, I just, I've been trialing this on the one minute just because that's what we've been doing here. Uh, where am I? There. Uh, hang on. Because I've got to show you, it doesn't look like a big movement and it's not. Um, this is back on the one minute again. I just want to show you this because anyone can do this in their waking hour, hours. It doesn't really matter. So, for me, this is a much tighter entry. Yeah, I've seen this. I've seen this push up, likely for it to come back down a profit before it goes back up again. Right, it's in an, in an uptrend, and we still got to think about what the trend is. I, I'm I'm pretty sure Paul doesn't tend to take trend into direct in in sort of into account, but I need I need to I, you know. One of them, I was having a discussion with the Hoff um, yesterday, my yesterday, and like, you know, the harmonic scanner is great, but it does not take into account trend. And um, I learned after many trades off the harmonic scanner, oh, yes, it's come to the D point, it's going to turn, and it just continues either up or down. It's because the trend is overriding it. Huh? So for me, trend is really important here to understand uh, what the high time frames are. So, but this well, is in I a very agree short. With you, Brian, with my limited knowledge of trading, that I've come to respect the trends. Yeah, trend is trend is a very powerful uh, thing because what's behind trend is profit, um, and that's what people want is profit because they continue those trends. Anyway, I just want to... <laughs> so, Alistair, is it all right if I keep it on the one minute? 
Um, yeah, okay. All right, thank you. So um, the point here that I want to make, though, is when you, even if you're not here, what, what Paul's playing with, he's playing with or, or, or talking about an exit manager that once you're in this trade, will detect when these turn white or when you have a colour change up. So if I move that, oh, that's see good. where that's got a colour change up, that would automatically get you out and still 5%. So you wouldn't have to be there. That's good. Okay. Now. Yeah. That's a good 5%, an hour and a half, let's say, because you've stayed in and waited for it to pull back up again. Right now, the thing about this is you can then start playing with your stop loss. If the spread is two pips on this, I could say you could bring that down to two pips. And now, what is your return? Same trade. 14, is that what it does say? Yeah, 14%. Same trade, hour and a half, 14%, two pips. It never came back anywhere near there in that trade. Is it not big enough, Alistair? No, well, that's my eyes. Yeah, no, I can see it. It's, yeah, that's good. That's good. All right. Now, that, that's, that's just an example, one example, right? So then, for me, this is only 11 in the morning. Like, no problems. This here is like midday. Beautiful. So for me, midday, a lot of the times things change or continue. So now, oh, here we go. Whoops. And that, that's now six. So pre-London Open. A trend will potentially change, right? So this is not when anybody in England or UK is is awake, but it is for me. It's this is an opportunity for me. So because we're in an uptrend, and this pulls back down here, and I'll just show you. See where it's tapped out. See where it came down to. There is basically where it started, Sydney. Commonly, it can do that. Not all the time, but it can, right? And it came back to 800. So now I'm out of this trade and I'm looking for the next trade. So what am I looking for, people? I think Helen's still here. So it's not just... And Ray's there. Oh, and Rian. Oh, my gosh. Welcome. Hey, hey Brian. Hey, yeah. Brian. Yeah. Uh, on that last trade, you've got two blue boxes prior to getting out so if i know the manager it, it would have kicked you out wouldn't it it may do that you're absolutely correct i particularly this is me this is me ray i would <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be really blunt i probably won't use it <laughs> to be honest because what i'm seeing here no, is not real blunt <laughs> <laughs> Chuck it, not kick it to you, the Brian. curb, right? Not for you. Not for <laughs> you, Brian. No, no, you're right. But but what I'm seeing in this and what I've been looking at this over the last couple of weeks, this is just like we could come to this, Ray, at these sort of times in the day and just take trades and and really not nice tight stop losses. I am this is my bluntness, right? I am so happy that Paul has now taken on. It's been so many times. You know, what's your what's your reward to your risk? He, he, I am so happy that the group has is looking at the reward now to what risk you put in. One percent only. He's doing the same. One percent and looking for a much bigger return. This is where we're going to make profits, right? When we focus You've like this. That, Brian. <laughs> hey? You've never said that. No, I've never said it. I, I say it in the background. So here we go. We're out of the trade. It pulls into white. I'm going, okay, is this a direction change? 
same stuff. What has it done? Did it break structure? Yes, it broke structure. Pull back down. Beauty. We've got a color change here. It went into slightly pink. It's hard to see. So I'll, I'll try, we'll pull it because I need the whole thing in a minute. It pulled into pink, but they're only little pinkies. They're little ones. And then it goes into white again and we get a color change. I'm going to go, beauty, that looks like a direction change. It hasn't broken anything. And now I'm looking, well, where am I? Here. Right. So I see this. Dude. I'm in a nice trade dig. It changes. I'm out of the trade. It goes white. I've got time to think about this. This is like, I don't know, an hour or whatever, you know, whatever, half an hour. It pulls back down here, um, you know, and I can use my higher highs, lower lows. I can see that it pulls down here and starts to pull back up. It's created a higher low. Thank you very much. I'm looking for a direction change. And then I get a color change here. Decide, will I get in? Yeah, I'll get in. All right, what can I risk? And what am I risking? All right, so I might not get in until this candle because I get this color change indicators indicator on that engulfing green one. It comes up, breaks structure, and pulls back. So I go like, okay, when it pulls back, I'm going to get into the trade there. I'm going to tighten that up. Let's just say we do five. I'm being, again, conservative. We'll have a look and see what it does later. That's five pips, right? And then I start traveling with it. Yes, there was a color change there, right? No, but did it come back to the 62? No. If it broke the 62, maybe I'd think about it, right? But didn't break the 62. This is just me. So then, oh, it's got more white. Oh, I'll keep going. Come up, 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 up. We got a color change that would have knocked you out. If you're using an exit manager thing, it would knock you out. But the point is, it, and that actually would work there, but the point is I would probably get out when it pulls down here to break structure. See it pull back down here to break structure? I'm out. That's 10%. In what period of time? Uh, where do I get in? Uh, there somewhere. That is two hours, two and a half hours. That's not too bad. Now, if I know that it's pushed down and it's come back up, I can tighten this stop loss up. I can make that two pips again. There's 25%. And, and when it pulls up and pulls back, I go, oh, this is close to just pre-London open. I'm going to wait and see if I get a direction change which I did just there. I could have got into the trade at that point. That could knock me out and I could lose 1%. But then I get back in because there it goes. Anyway, have I shown you two examples? Like there's a 14 and there's a 25 in two trades. My waking hours, my morning, my lunch to mid-afternoon, that's it. Job's done. See you later. Can you see why I'm looking at the sessions, Tom, and why I'm what this is doing now? Right. So is this basically going to replace the Ninjicator? It actually has the Ninjicator. No, the Ninjicator will still be there. You can use Ninjicator if you want to. This is this has the Ninjicator incorporated into it with other things as well overlaid into it. Okay. So it basically, I'm, well, don't quote me, but Kevin, I'm pretty sure it's it's Ninjicator basic with this trailing Heikinashi. Um, it's got so many other things. Let, let's go. I'll show you. Like there's there's all of these time frame stuff. Oh, 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 oh. I hear there's a thing. No, uh, there might be something in the. Am I? Uh, hang on. Somebody might be, no, nobody's messaging. That's okay. I thought somebody might be, um, it might have been um, Kevin even. Oh, 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 could be. Hang on a minute. Let me just see. What is going on? 
Uh, Richard Costello's watching too. That's all right. I don't know. Oh, heck, I'm not doing that. Sorry. Um, Brian, do you wait for the bullish and bearish candles as well? No. Uh, let me just see who. I know that's lots of other people. Okay, sorry. I'm, I've been distracted. Sometimes happens with me. I don't know if you've realized or not. Okay. Um, I, I untick show wicks. I don't need wicks, right? That's just me. Uh, you got bullish and bearish candles, and that's fine. But I don't really want those. I don't actually work off those. So I take the basic upper and lower off. You can put these back on if you want. They're, they do this sort of like a pro trend type thing, but I don't really want it because I'm just looking for swing highs and lows. I want the up and down. You can turn these off if you want to. You've got up and down too. The smooth tie and ashes I want in there. This color change up and up and down, I want in there, right? This bull and bear engulfing and full, I don't have those on. Um, and that's it. That's me. And you can have these. These are really light. These are like the um, uh, EMAs, right? 50, 20, and a four. So I've got my, I use the, I still use the DeLoreans, but I've got uh, 5, 13, um, 62, 200, and 800. If you look, uh, where are they? Inputs here. Yeah, 5, 13, 62, 200, 800. That's what I use. Not, not, and other people don't have to. I'm just saying that's what I do. All right. Can you make the smooth Hakanashi's different sizes? Um, can you make them different sizes? No, I don't think so. I think it's only color. Um, let me see. You can change the length. Um, is that the I, size? Is that that's what I'm saying? Is that the is that what they call the? No, this is just more. This is this is just ten ten candles length. I I think, but I don't see that's exponential. Uh, I don't know what this is. I don't know what Elmer is. I I don't know. What, what's it? Hang on. Does it say anything? No, that's just the deviations. Yeah, okay. I don't, well, I don't know, um, Alistair, I'm sorry. No, it's not just curious. But that's just looking for the, so that's only in a very short period of time. So that's from like, 7 a.m. my time to 3 in the afternoon time. And there's two really nice trades. Yeah, and if I looked at the day before. I could have been in the trade for nearly the whole day. See where it came out here? Pull down there. If I had got into that buy and just stayed in that buy, look at it from there all the way up to there. And that time there, that's that's um, uh, that's just before. So that's two in the afternoon. So at three in the afternoon is so I said pre London open, pre six a.m. and then ten. See so eight o'clock there. Uh, where is it? No, eight o'clock. No, where is it? There. See where it's it changed to pull down to there. Oh no, that's not. That can't be right. That's two a.m. Oh, God, what am I doing? Sorry. There. That's the London bit. And then it, in London, it continued it up. Uh, 
um, take that off and I'll put that on just so that you can see. See how it pulled there and then up, as I explained, consolidated, then pulled back up again. And then the changeover when London went off and New York continued, down it went. That's the day before. So there's some bigger opportunities. If people in, uh, you know, London and New York session, like you've got much bigger uh, profit potentials in your time zone than, than I have. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So you're no night owl. Well, no, no. But that there would have been potentially a, you know, amazing trade. So you've got London open. It pulled back down again when it came back up into that point. I'll show you. If we look at it, ooh, ooh, much closer. If we put the, you got the session on, let's just say, yep, wherever, you, you'll see that, right? And if I put the ProTrend on, <coughs> you can see it. It came down, broke this structure, then pulled up. See this color change there? So you could wait to get in somewhere in here. It really wouldn't matter. All right? So it's pulled back up. It matched out these. You could even wait till it comes back and up to here even because that's break structure there. You could get into the trade here while it's still going. Yeah, or even at this color change here. Yeah, so now I go, I'm just saying if you're, being ultra conservative, there's entries there, but also there or there. It doesn't really matter. Or there. You could get into the trade at that point. Come here. You could then put on a five pips there. Like there or there. It didn't come back either there or there. It was still didn't come back to that. But I'm just being really ultra conservative. If you stay in that trade or watch it, oop, watch it while it's doing its thing. If you, you wait for it to color change back again, see how it changed, come back in and change, that's 11% out of five. But if you change that to, say, a two pip, that's 27, nearly 30% increase. And that's in how long? Massive. That is, and that's ultra conservative. That's in basically two hours. Two hours in the trade for nearly 30% increase. In your lunch hour. This is going to change things dramatically. Um, if I turn that off and we turn this back, you can see it came up to there and then what's going to happen? New York's going to open, so either it'll do one or two things, change direction, or it'll continue on. And that's push up, push up, profit take, and then drop back out again. Where's it going towards? The 800. It did. So from there down to 800, there's another trade. Getting somewhere there, maybe. Work out where the 800 roughly might go to, say there. Change this to five pips. Is this boring? Like this is 10%, change it to two, 22%. The only thing is if you had got in there, there's another opportunity to get in or another one down here. But that's, yeah. There we go. So London, New York, waking hours, you could have, I don't know, what was that, 30 plus 20. You could have 60% in your account. Two trades. And you could lose, you could, you could in fact lose a whole lot of 1% because you haven't got a clue what you're doing and still come out with um, 
with plenty of percentage from one day on one pair. It sounds like, hang on a minute, let me just see. Oh, you know, videos are, oh, no, I thought people might have died or something. There was just no oohs, no ahs, no oh, shit, look at that. Nothing, not a thing. Just just I've like said, you're all stunned. I've, I've reacted, come on. Oh, yeah, yeah. The yeah session no, breaks make a massive difference Yeah, in terms of that. A focus really is 100%. Yeah, I'm sit, I'm sitting here trying to figure out the uh, FX market session times. I'm trying to get this set up. You you want it again? Well, no, I'm 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 just trying to figure it out because it says you know I got to do a time zone. So I googled it. It said Greenwich Mean Time was minus eight. No, no, no. Put your own time in. It's, it's automatic on yours. Oh, hang on here. If I go to Los Angeles, yours is minus seven. That's all you got to do. Um, it said minus eight on Google. Yeah, well, Google's not always right. I'll believe you. Yeah, so if you just put minus seven in there, there. All right. That's all you need. I can't see your screen. Oh, sorry. You can't either. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. So, yeah, just in here. Just select minus seven. Okay. At the moment. All right? Because this will... Uh, this will probably change when you yeah, all I, come but off. I have to make, but I have to manually change the Sydney, Tokyo's and all that. Yeah, yeah. This you have to put in manually. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If you don't change that at all in your in that setting. If you leave it just the way it is and you just change your time zone on your chart, it sets up so whatever time zone it's originally created in, it has all them times in there and it doesn't change nothing. It'll change the box, just the time zone on your on your bottom. You don't have to mess with that. All of this is the same, is it for you, Rick? No, is it's it? what I I was messing with what you were talking about it, and I, and I didn't change nothing in that settings. I just changed my time on the chart itself. Because oh setting, right, okay, down now, here. If you see, set your GMT to plus ten. Now you need to change all those times to GMT plus ten. If yeah, you yeah, yeah, yeah. Blowing whatever the setting is on, the, on that on that indicator, just how yeah, it comes yeah. out of the box. Okay. It programs in the background, and then it just change, this just changes your time zone on the thing there. Oh, right. Okay. Now, like, because I was messing with it while you were talking about it, and any time I change the the time zone, now I'm trying to figure out what time zone was on there originally. Yeah, so okay. I have to go back and change everything because it's, I think it was GMT plus one, and, like, open session is 8 a.m. or London is 8 a.m. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. 1500, so yeah. it draws the box on its own, and it just changes the timeline on your thing. Okay. Oh, I did it old school. Thanks, Rich. <laughs> You're matching oh. your time zone, right? That's the thing. Is, is, your, is if you change that that time zone, you got to match all the times as well. Yeah, that's all right. Wait, say that again, please. I get distracted easily, so I start playing around while Brian's talking and zone half. <laughs> half but anyway, if you leave the time zone the way it is on the on the chart, what, what Rick's uh, saying is this down here. If you leave that as uh, minus seven, okay. So I'm UTC minus six, you're minus seven. But if you go into where the actual, like the actual settings of that FX market session and just leave it alone, it automatically changes. Because otherwise, if you change the time zone there, you need to change the times as well. But the time zone on on the, the blank setting, it's just set for Tokyo. It doesn't include Sydney. So you need to add that couple hours to it. Aha. Uh -huh. So, because I while you were talking, I was messing around with it, and when I changed to my time zone, yeah, then it still keeps that same that time seven to seventeen hundred, and it messes the whole thing up. But if you just leave it alone and just change on your chart, yeah, it'll match like it's supposed to based on your chart. Yeah, okay. As soon as you change the time zone on here, you have to change all the times across the board to that. Yeah, point. okay, okay. Tom will work it out. And you thought I never paid attention. I've never said that, Rick. I know you pay attention. You have to. If you're sitting in one of those machines with the the cable coming out, you've got to pay attention, don't you? I'm barbecuing and sitting at home right now. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the fireworks, mate. That was impressive. 
Yeah, dude. It was, that was, Is that, good, was, I, was that just you or did you get, or did you get I, commissioned to do it? I worked through a company. Like I, uh, three years ago, I got my full pyro ticket. Yeah, yeah. I started working on my pyro ticket and I just, I walked on a field and started working for this company. Yeah. And I just do it out of, out of the fun part of, of just lighting off fireworks. Like it's just, yeah. So I told the guys before, I didn't want to be a display supervisor, like responsible for a whole show. I just want to help out. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was in a bind and he said he needed somebody to shoot the show. So I set the show up and, and I just follow his, like he gives me a program and a computer control. I just do the grunt work, lay it on the ground, wire it oh. up. Wow. But and there's no and there's no candles. No candles. They're gone. Lovely. There's still more of a mess behind me though. But no. oh, no, no, who cares? Who cares, Rick? It's fine. I was very impressed. Actually, I really like the picture with the fireworks and just the picture from behind you just standing. That was that was that was absolutely it looked so good. I really yeah, I got a full picture of that one. That was yeah. a special yeah. privilege to come and hang out right behind me in the in the seclusion zone. So yeah, no, that was really good. Uh, yeah, it's hard on Facebook stuff, but yeah, no, it, it was great. Anyway, um, I'm just yeah. impressed with what this indicator can do for us in the short term if we want to use it. And again, it's no different to what we've been doing in bankers. Like just apply your 1%, use a demo account, just put your ones. If you lose your ones, just hang in there and and get into the trade. The more you practice it, the you know, the tighter you make your stop loss, the, the better opportunities you'll get to get in. Uh, and, and just remember, the further it goes into that into that move, the more likely it is to reverse that 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 lower time frame trend, right? That's all you've got to be looking out for. Because that for every push up, there's got to be a pullback down, you know, and it just the way it is. But yeah, this is Brian. Yes. You're talking about your percentages and stuff like that. So Miranda's been just focusing on DeLorean for the last year. Yeah. That's all she's been learning on the trading. She's getting yep. she's getting pretty good with this. And she's last month, I think she lost a whole bunch of trades. Yeah. One percent, one percent, one percent, one percent. Making her money back this month. I guess sorry, let's go back. She lost in August. No, July. And August yep. is making it back because of that whole risk to reward. Yeah. So the risk reward, like you get two or three percent and you can lose, you can be like 50% loss yeah. all the time. And you can yeah. still be making money on your accounts. Yeah, yeah. As long as you're risking that one percent and that yeah, that risk to reward ratio. Like that one that you've got there. Yeah, I, 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 I say it the other way, Rick. Like for me, this is very much about psychology. So we are risking one percent, yet what we're doing is we're having a reward to, to risk trade because i'm putting the reward in front of what the risk is and i know the risk is only one percent so i'm sort of like it's just me it's a mental thing that i that i always do and i say i'm and, and i say to all of you and i say in this session i'm only ever risking one percent and i do i only ever risk one percent on a trade on a pair right the thing though is or the way i'm trading is i'm i'm trading reward versus risk not risk versus reward because the industry says oh it's risk versus reward no no for me it's not it's what is my reward because that's my focus not my risk because the risk is really unimportant it's like irrelevant in all of this as you just stated you can risk and lose a whole lot if your focus is on a much better reward so that's why i you know, I've said this before, if I don't have a reward of 5% in a trade, I won't consider taking it. Potential. I'm not saying that they all come off 5% or, or that, you know, there's heaps that'll be maybe only one and a half, two, three, whatever. It turns on you and you, you just can't but don't, factor that don't, in, right? Don't call it risk. Call it placement. Stop talking about risk. Reward to placement, <laughs> maybe. But you're placing it to get the to get the reward. Yeah, well, absolutely, you could do that. Um, just that the industry talks about reward because it is a risk. Every time you put a trade on, you have a risk of losing that. Where Tom has minimised that because what he's doing is he's there at the time watching. So if it comes back to break even, he'll just kill the trade, even if it's like you know. Uh, 
I don't know, a, a small portion of a percent even. Five pips. Five, okay, thank you. Five pips, whatever that is. Because it can swing five pips in a second. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And we've all seen that, particularly if you're on down on the one-minute chart, but it'll do that on any time frame because price is price. doesn't matter what time frame you're on. So, yeah, so that's exciting. I, I think this is exciting. I'm just waiting for the changeover session, see what happens around Tokyo, and then look at getting in a trade. It's like, that's where I'm at. Okay. What do you expect it to do? Go into uh, a downtrend or carry on in the uptrends? Well, it's been pushing up. Like if you look at it here, um, it, it it pulled back down in the uh, New York session. I see it coming across and then we'll just see what happens in that first couple of hours of Sydney. Is it push up? It'll pull back down again before it goes back up. Or it may just pull down and then and then breaks, you know, continue on and keep going up. It's a, it's a the historical high at the moment. Yeah, but who cares? It can push past that. Mm -hmm. One thing you need to, need to remember is like this is like way up 52 week range. So over a year, this is the highest highs it's ever been, but it's only one year, right? Yes, it's got an inclination to turn at some time, but I don't think we've seen that. If you go to UJ, which is its sister or brother or twin or whatever you want to call it, let's just auto that back up. See that? Again, push up, push up, you know, pre-London, pull back down, consolidation, push back up, pull back down again. It's just done the same thing. All right? And this now has come down, matched off that low there. What do you think it's going to do? It's pushed up, pushed back there. If you just look at that one, if you just look at that one move there to there, What's it going to do? Either. I'm going to pull back and drop or pull back and continue up. Correct. Just wait. Let it tell you what it's going to do. Let it come to you, as they say. Yes. Don't start. Don't chase it. Like, Peter, your question is relevant. Like, which way is it going to go? I don't know. Let it show you which way it's going to go. Right, it's now, and if it's box, it's made its New York, it's made its London high. New York hasn't gone any higher; it's actually slightly lower, and that's its low. So why the box, why this blue box doesn't go any further out, is because it hasn't made any further low in this session. Right, is that a good trade? Bloody good trade. Is that a good trade, London to there? Oh, bloody good trade. Mm -hmm. Is that a good trade from Asian session here somewhere up to there? Bloody good trade. Bloody good trade. <laughs> right? These are what you, what I call great trades. Or here in Aussie, we just call them bloody good trades. But, you know, internationally, that would be a great trade. Yeah. Or we might call them rip snorters. We might call them, you know, um, lots of other things. Um, Ray knows all the things we'd probably call it. it. No, just looking at swing highs, swing lows, and, you know, realising that there'll be some consolidation somewhere in the thing. That's the consolidation there. It looks like it's... It can commonly happen here, right, at the end of New York into Sydney, and then commonly it can happen again here, at this sort of like pre-London open, getting ready to London. But it may not. It may just keep continuing. you just got to see what the market is telling you and then whether it takes off. You don't have to take a trade until up here even when it breaks structure and then get ready to get in. With these, now with these, you know, colour change on these things, it makes life so much easier. Well, not easy. It just allows you to have a, you know, a choice anyway. Okay. 
that's enough to bore you with and to get you motivated to trade, okay? Every other pair has a similar sort of, uh, you know, if we look at, where are we? Just go to your AUD and just do that. And just put on the market, right? Look at that. Sydney goes here, bang, Asian, um, Tokyo, ding, 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 ding. Pre, Pre-London, sideways, London opens, push up, then back down again to here, right? That that you just have to work out, make it, and then it comes to where the New York and London open, poof, off it goes. London gets, so it pulls back down again because that's profiting. When London closes, up, oh, off it goes in the other direction again. It just... Right? It doesn't have to go in the other direction. It could just continue back down here, but it didn't in this currency pair. Yeah. Did you look at, because I missed the start, um, the US dollar Swiss rank? That, that. We looked at everything and. Oh, that's a massive drop. Yeah. There you go. Look at that, New York. Is that a great trade or is that a great trade? That's a pretty great trade. Yeah. It's a, a movement on that it's an effing great trade. <laughs> a bloody good trade. A bloody good trade, that. Eh? And it's there. It's on the chart. Look at that. It pushed up there, came back, broke, like broke structure there, pulled back up again, get in the trade. Bang. Down. And if you look at it, where's ProTrend? If you look at it, oh, it's hard. Because it did do little pull-ups here. But basically, it's just purple, 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 basically all the way down. And people in New York, oh, well, that's pre-London. So where, hang on a minute, where are you? This would have been a bit of a bugger for you, though. Like if you had a got in there, that's like, oh, no, it's 6 o'clock in the morning for you, Tom, that's right. That's yes. ideal. Six in the morning, beauty, get in the trade. Do, 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 all the way to now. I'd be getting out now if you're in it, but, you know, hey. And if, and, and, and don't shoot me down for saying this, but if you turned it yeah. to five minutes on the way down, yes, yeah. purple all the way, there's no comebacks at all. Yeah, but you could do that as you're in the trade, though, um, no, Alistair. That, that's... That's really what you would do. That's right. Yeah. But I think that would uh, let let me uh, let me be devil's advocate here, Alistair. I think that that would put you in a false sense of security, unfortunately. So uh, if I put ProTrend on and we go to the five minute and we look at that that drop, yeah, it's purple all the way, except for this bit here. But at these points. You know, you might jump to here and back again, but the point is if it does come up, it's going to have to come up a fair way, a lot more than the one minute. So you would be getting out of the trade a lot later and it would be reducing your profit. But if you had an exit manager on that on the five minute, it would get you out here at this color change there. Or some exit super duper thing on the five minute absolutely you would get in the trade here and it stayed purple all the way you're right maybe that's what you do with an exit manager if you are maybe like me i'm asleep so just drop that on but then i use c trader so I, that exit manager probably won't be any good because it's on mt4 well yeah paul's talking about kevin trying to do the 11 isn't he with the well, no, you can on this. All I got to do with this here, see, all I got to do this is add an alert. Yeah. And I can go, is it bearish or whatever it is? I can also have a, oh, where is it? That's no, not that. It's in here. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, it is. Uh, where's the color change? Ah, oh, I think it's going to be factored into it. Yeah, I think that's something they're looking at, yeah. Yeah. 
Hey Jay, I don't know. I know it's here. Hey Jay, hiking Ashy down, hiking Ashy up. So those color change ones are that and that, I think. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's what they are. So when you get this, uh, it might be, it might say different, but that's what you could do. Up and down zone combo alerts. You can have up and down. Woo! Oh, now that's the zone ones. See where it says up and down zone. No, I'm I'm liking this high and ashy change. Brian, what um, yes. candle do you get in on, on the color change? After the color change. After the color change, yes. Yeah, so right see where that says can... color change and it's that candle there. You wouldn't get in until the next candle. And, oh, right. and Peter, it needs yeah. to be going in the correct direction. So I would not get into that until the next candle. So you wait for the third candle then. Sorry? The second after color change. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In this instance. But if that was a if that was a, a cell candle there, I would get in straight away on that one. Right. Understand because that finishes, you get the alert, you look at it, and if that's starting to go up, you wouldn't get in because it's not in the zone <laughs> trend direction. Trend direction this candle is in the trend direction, starts to sell, you get in on that one, right? Understood. But if that one was a sell candle red, I would get in on that. So it's opposite here. See where you get that trend change, the change color there, and you get a green one. Yeah. That one with a as a a doji, I wouldn't get in. I'd wait till the next one it starts pushing up. Okay. I'd get in yeah. on that candle. So it's, it's using the candle and the and the what the candle looks like too to make a decision on entry. Right. I know Paul's looking at bearish candles and bullish candles. It's like. I think it's harder to see that for a new person in trading. But if it changes color, it goes from purple to white. I mean, you'd nearly, you could nearly be blind and see that. Does that make sense? There's no, there's no yeah, like, oh, what's a bull candle? What's a, what's an engulfing? What's a bear? You know, there's all that stuff. But does it change from purple to white? Yeah. Does it change from white to purple? Yeah. That's all you need to know. Yeah. Yep. There you go. Well, it's been a pleasure being here today, whatever that time is for you in the world. And I think, oh my gosh, it's been an hour and a half. <laughs> Where does time go when, when we're on these sessions? Like it's unbelievable. I try to keep it to an hour so that people are not sort of annoyed with my voice or or other people. Take all the time you need. Yeah, I know. It's all right. Yeah. So. In, term, in, in terms of it's just been half an hour, probably. <laughs> well, Elsie, you came on after the start. So now, everybody in the UK, what your job is, is to message Paul and go, when are we getting this bloody indicator? Right? I've got people showing me this thing. You're showing me. You now they're showing me. That, you know, like, come on. I want, I want to get my hands on it. I want to play with it too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, I think I think also in in fairness, in fairness, it's down to Kevin and his time. So just we, you know, that's why I feel it's patience. It's not up to Paul really. <laughs> it's only the it release. Is, it is but, Kevin, but it's really Kevin and they're, they're and, speaking tomorrow. Yeah, I think Kevin's got a day off, but I mean, he's yeah, been. We're talking tomorrow about it. I he's been working it. hard, so we'll have to see. All right, it will happen. So thank you for being here, Rick, and your advice. Thanks, Peter, Alistair, Tom, as always. Helen, in the background, thank you. Um, yes, Brian. No worries. Thanks, Brian. Was that interesting, Helen? I thought it was about the sheep today. Yeah, oh, no. Yeah. You. you don't want to know. Oh, we've got a bit of rain, so it's going to get a bit wet. I think they're talking 20 oh, mil. Oh, about that here today as well. Yeah. Rain. 
Yeah, we'll get a bit of rain. No, I think it's sleep. I think it's working on the shower today. I'll be inside. Yesterday was uh, mowing and um, brush cutting for the raspberries. We're putting in a whole raspberry we had last year, but this year we want to upgrade our raspberry plantation. So we've got a, a big long row of raspberries and canes and stuff. Anyway, beside the point, chickens are going well, lambs are all popping, you know, like heaps of stuff happening here. <laughs> Until tomorrow, same bat time, same bat channel. Thank you very much, everyone. Rian also and Ray, take it easy. All right. Have a good, good, day, good night. No worries. Brian, no worries. Brian, you, haven't your, you, haven't your, you haven't said your bit, Brian. Oh, yeah. Look, if you like any of this or you think there's anything that you want to ask, put a note under this live in the group or, or get back to the person or whatever. If you just watch the recording, that would be nice. Thank you very much. Ciao.